Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to wrap up our discussion of the structure conduct performance paradigm. I'm going to talk about how it fits into modern economics and talk about how SCP developed over the decades into what we think of as modern IO. I'll wrap up by talking about where we're going for the next few weeks. The structure conduct performance paradigm began all the way back in the 1930s when a lot of economics was kind of examining itself during the Great Depression. Prior to this, we had basic microeconomic models, things like perfect competition and monopoly, but economists started to realize that during the Depression, what they were seeing didn't fit into either of those extremes. And what was probably going on is that there was a lot of industries that lie in that gray area in between perfect competition and monopoly. Like I said earlier, that's really the core of what IO is set out to do. Explain those. Joe Bain was an economist active in the 1930s through 1950s who studied the link between the barriers to entry in a market and the profitability of the firms who were in that market. You can see how barriers to entry is a structure component and profitability is a performance outcome and conduct is going to lie somewhere in between there. A lot of the SCP economists were very data driven. They studied real industries in great depth and wrote books about the features of individual industries. The SCP economists though were not very reliant on formal models. They were very empirically minded. One of the most important contributions of SCP to modern economics that includes managerial economics is that they really started that discussion about oligopoly, or imperfectly competitive markets. Here's a picture of Joe Bain and a graph from his 1956 study on the relationship between barriers to entry and the profitability in industries. On the horizontal axis here, we've got the concentration ratio, and on the y-axis, we've got the profitability. As you can see, there is a positive relationship between concentration ratio and profitability, meaning that more concentrated industries tend to be more profitable. Usually that's because more concentrated industries exhibit more market power. Bain also divided the industries into high, substantial, and low barriers to entry. You can see these black dots over here are the high barriers to entry. Those tend to be highly profitable and highly concentrated, whereas the low barriers to entry tend to be down here on this end. The SCP paradigm, as I've been describing it so far in these videos, really implies a causal link that goes from structure to conduct to performance, and they really think about performance depending on structure and conduct. Remember that the concentration of an industry is part of structure. And if more concentrated industries tend to be worse for society, it's natural that SCP economists were strongly in favor of the government coming in and doing some trust busting or breaking up these highly concentrated industries, things like the bell system getting broken up. SCP's main critics came from the Chicago School of Economics. The Chicago School had some interesting views, some of which have made it into mainstream e economics, but others that haven't. The Chicago School was strongly in favor of formal models, which the SCP economists were a bit nervous about, and that's something that has really become a big part of modern industrial economics. The Chicago School was opposed to the view that high concentration was what led to the poor performance. Instead, they viewed high concentration as a product of conduct and performance, saying that it was really the most efficient firms who got big and forced their competition out, and that created a highly concentrated industry. Overall, it's probably not as simple as either of these views. Rather, there's probably some kind of feedback that's going on. Conduct and performance can feed back into structure, and structure can lead back into those other two things. Therefore, it's not really correct to think that it's a straight through line from structure to conduct performance and not 
back around to the other side because there really is that effect going on sometimes. The Chicago School and SCP fought against each other, but in the end, both lost out to game theory. All of modern industrial economics is really founded upon game theory. Game theory has existed informally for quite a long time, but it really only began as a field in the 1940s. The real pioneers of game theory were John von Neumann and Oscar Morgenstern, who wrote the book Theory of Games and Economic Behavior. This is really the first time that economists came to understand the importance of game theory and when game theory became an integral part of economics. Later on in the 1950s, John Nash would contribute further to the field of game theory with one of the most famous concepts called Nash Equilibrium. You'll have heard of John Nash if you've read the book or seen the movie A Beautiful Mind. The idea behind game theory is that we consider decision-making in strategic environments. A strategic environment is one where each agent understands that their behavior has an effect on other people's behavior, and other people's behavior has an effect on themselves. This turns out to be a really perfect fit for industrial economics because we're looking at these imperfectly competitive markets. These markets don't have so many competitors that you don't really have to think about anybody else, nor are they monopolies where, of course, you don't have to think about anybody else. Ultimately, firms behave in a highly strategic way. We are going to be spending quite a bit of time on game theory in the coming weeks, so look forward to that. Here's a picture of Oscar Morgenstern and John von Neumann, founders of game theory, enjoying a nice day on the beach. Now that we have covered a general framework to think about different markets, we are going to study specific market structures and examine how managerial conduct, mostly in terms of price and quantity, will differ across those market structures and then consequently how the performance will differ as measured by deadweight loss and total surplus, as well as firms' profits. We're going to start with the basics, perfect competition and monopoly, and then spend quite a bit more time on different models of oligopoly. Just to remind you, since we are talking about firms making decisions, we are going to be using cost functions from here to the end of the course. If you need to review that, that is the second half of the production and cost material that we covered earlier. As I mentioned before, we're going to start with perfect competition and monopoly. These are the two extremes of the spectrum of market structures. Perfect competition has many small firms all producing the same thing. Monopoly, on the other hand, is when we have one single firm dominating the entire market. Most industries in real life, of course, are somewhere in between these two. So once we've covered these two, we will turn to oligopolies. Markets that have more than one firm, but not so many that market power disappears. Oligopoly is where industrial economists, as well as business managers, spend most of their time. The key feature of oligopolies is that firms behave strategically. That is, they always understand that their actions impact the actions of others. Because of this, we are going to need to learn the basics of game theory and apply them to our oligopoly models. In this set of videos, we have learned the structure conduct performance paradigm. A very general and broad analytical framework to think about how different markets are fundamentally different and similar to each other. We started with the underlying conditions of the market, that's the structure, then led into conduct, the behavior of firms in these markets, and then finally performance. What is the outcome for both society and the firms? From here we will head on to thinking about individual market structures. If you have any questions, Please let me know. Thanks for watching.